Up to this point in the module, we have examined equations where one side of the equal sign has the same value as the other side. In this lesson, we will examine inequalities where the two sides are not equal. The inequality shown here can be read as 6 is less than 7. Another symbol you should be familiar with is the symbol for less than or equal to. So this example can be read as 6 is less than or equal to 7. We can also use this symbol in this way, where we are saying that 7 is less than or equal to 7. We can also express inequalities with this symbol. This is read as 5 is greater than 3. This symbol denotes greater than or equal to, as in 5 is greater than or equal to 3. Now it's important to note that we can express the same inequality in two ways. For example, we can take the statement 5 is greater than 2 and rewrite it as 2 is less than 5. Both statements here express the same inequality. Similarly, the statements 6 is less than or equal to 7 and 7 is greater than or equal to 6 express the same idea. Now I happen to be partial to taking inequalities and rewriting them so that the inequality sign opens to the right. This way, the smaller number is always to the left of the larger number, in the same way that they appear on the number line. Okay, now that we have taken care of our general notation, our goal here will be to solve inequalities such as this one. Before we can do this, however, let's first make some observations regarding the ways in which inequalities behave. Take the inequality 6 is less than 7 you will find that this inequality behaves similar to the way in which equations behave. Here's what I mean. Let's take this inequality and subtract 3 from both sides. When we do this, we get 3 is less than 4. Since 3 is less than 4, we can see that the inequality remains intact when we subtract 3 from both sides of the inequality. Similarly, if we multiply both sides by 4, the inequality remains since 12 is less than 16. Adding 8 to both sides results in 20 is less than 24, which is a valid inequality. Dividing both sides by 2 results in a valid inequality as well. So it would appear that inequalities behave the same as equations do, in that if you perform the same operation to both sides, the inequality remains intact. However, notice what happens when we divide both sides of the inequality by negative 2. When we do this, we get negative 5 is less than negative 6, which is false. Negative 5 is not less than negative 6. So the inequality here does not remain intact when we divide both sides by negative 2. In fact, it appears that we need to reverse the direction of the inequality here. So from the observations, we can make some general conclusions about inequalities. First, adding and subtracting the same number to or from both sides of the inequality does not affect the inequality. Second, multiplying and dividing both sides of the inequality by a positive number does not affect the inequality. And finally, multiplying and dividing both sides by a negative number reverses the inequality. We can now use these results to help us solve inequalities. Essentially, if we perform the same operation on both sides of the inequality, the inequality will remain intact. However, if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, we must reverse the direction of the inequality. Okay, let's try an example. Solving this inequality means finding all values for x that make the inequality a true statement. So to do this, we need to isolate the variable x. We'll do this by first subtracting 5 from both sides to get 2x is less than 6, and then we'll divide both sides by 2 to get x is less than 3. This means the solution to the inequality 2x plus 5 is less than 11 consists of any value of x that is less than 3. As you can see, there are infinitely many solutions to this inequality. Now another way to show the solution is to use a number line. To show the solution x is less than 3, we'll first draw a circle around 3 to denote that 3 is not one of the solutions. 
then to represent less than three we'll draw an arrow extending without end to the left so any number lying on the blue line is a solution to the inequality 2x plus 5 is less than 11. Okay, here's another example. To solve this inequality, we'll first subtract 2 from both sides to get negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 3. From here, we can isolate x by dividing both sides by negative 3. Now since we are dividing both sides by a negative number, we must be sure to reverse the direction of the inequality. So the solution to the inequality consists of any value of x that is greater than or equal to 1. To show this solution on the number line, we'll first add a dot at 1 to show that 1 is one of the solutions to the inequality. Next, to represent greater than 1, we'll draw an arrow to the right. So any number on the blue line is a solution to the original inequality. To solve this next inequality, we'll first expand the left-hand side, and then simplify the right-hand side. Then we'll simplify the left-hand side. And then we'll add 3x to both sides, and from here we can subtract 13 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 4 to get negative 2 is greater than x or we can say that x is less than negative 2. To show this on the number line, we'll draw a circle around negative 2 and then draw an arrow to the left. So any point on the blue line here will be a solution to the original inequality. Now sometimes you will encounter inequalities with three parts. These compound inequalities can be solved using the same techniques we have examined so far. To isolate x in this example, we'll first subtract 3 from all three parts. So 11 minus 3 equals 8. When we subtract 3 from 3 minus 2x, we get negative 2x. And when we subtract 3 from 1, we get negative 2. From here, we can isolate x by dividing all three parts by negative 2. So 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Next, since we are dividing all three parts by a negative number, we must reverse the direction of this inequality. From here, negative 2x divided by negative 2 equals x. Once again, we will reverse this inequality. And finally, negative 2 divided by negative 2 equals 1. To show this on our number line, we will examine the inequality in two parts. First, we have negative 4 is less than x. This is the same as x is greater than negative 4. To show this on the number line, we'll draw a circle around negative 4 and then draw an arrow to the right. Next, we have x is less than or equal to 1. To show this, we'll add a dot at 1 and then draw an arrow to the left. So the entire set of solutions to the compound inequality consists of all values of x that are greater than negative 4 and less than or equal to 1. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that solving inequalities is pretty much the same as solving equations. The primary difference is that whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you must reverse the inequality. In this lesson, we will examine some techniques for solving challenging questions involving inequalities. The first technique is combining inequalities. In this example, we want to combine these inequalities into one compound inequality so that we will have a better idea of the relationship that exists between w, x, and y. To combine these two inequalities, notice that each one is comparing x with another value. Since x appears in each inequality, we can use this common term to combine the two inequalities. Now before we do this, please notice that both inequalities here are facing the same direction. This is very important, as we will later see. Okay, so first we'll line up the x's here. And now when we combine the two inequalities using x as the common term, we get the following relationship. So here we can see that the value of x lies between the values of w and y. And we can also conclude that w must be less than y. Now let's examine another example. Notice that in this example, we once again have x in both inequalities. Now if we line up the x's here, 
and then combine the two inequalities using x as the common term, we get a compound inequality where it is difficult to make conclusions about the relationship between w and y. So when it comes to combining inequalities, you will find it useful to first rewrite the inequalities so that they are facing the same direction. So in our previous example, we'll take the top inequality and leave it as it is, but we'll take the bottom inequality and rewrite it as y is less than x. Now that both inequalities are facing the same direction, we can see that w is less than x and y is less than x. Since both w and y are less than x, we cannot combine these inequalities into a compound inequality, which makes it impossible to compare the values of w and y. Okay, the next technique to examine is the technique of adding inequalities. The underlying principle goes something like this. If a is less than b and c is less than d, then if we add the two inequalities, it must be true that a plus c is less than b plus d. Now this property makes even more sense to us if we examine a real world example. If Al has less than $15 and Bob has less than $10, then if we add Al's money and Bob's money, their combined wealth will be less than $25. Please notice here that both inequality signs are facing the same direction. This is a necessary requirement. In fact, before we add any inequalities, the inequality signs must be facing the same direction. So here's a quick example of this technique. Since 6 is greater than 1 and negative 2 is greater than negative 5, we know that when we add the two inequalities, the resulting inequality must be true. Now be careful to avoid taking this technique and applying it to the subtraction of inequalities. Now in some cases, if we subtract the inequalities, the result will hold true. However, in other cases, if we subtract inequalities, the result does not hold true. As such, there is no nice rule when it comes to subtracting inequalities, so avoid doing so. Similarly, you should avoid multiplying inequalities and dividing inequalities. This technique works only for adding inequalities. Okay, the next technique we will examine is best illustrated through the following examples. Since we know that x will always equal x, then we can also conclude that x plus 3 must always be greater than x for all values of x. To see why, let's examine x on the number line. To add 3 to x, we will move 3 units to the right on the number line to get x plus 3. Since x lies to the left of x plus 3 on the number line, it must be the case that x is less than x plus 3. In this manner, the number line can sometimes come in handy when tackling inequality questions. Please note that we can use similar logic to show that x minus 2 must be less than x. If we examine x on the number line, then x minus 2 will lie 2 units to the left of x. Since x minus 2 lies to the left of x on the number line, it must be the case that x minus 2 is less than x. Now let's combine some of our techniques to compare the values of y and w if we are told that y is less than x and x plus 5 is less than w. So given this information, what can we conclude about the relationship between y and w? Well, one approach is to first recognize that x must be less than x plus 5 for the reasons we just examined. At this point, we have x plus 5 in both inequalities. So now, if we line up the x plus 5s and then combine the two inequalities using x plus 5 as the common term, we can see the relationship that exists between w and y. We can see that y must be less than w. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that we can combine some inequalities if we first rewrite them so that the inequality signs are facing the same direction. We also saw that we can add inequalities once the inequality signs are facing in the same direction as well.